Hey, Fight Night fans, this is Chad B, the Sports Information Director for Lynn University, bringing you this week's Nightly Review. Now, we had a big week in Lynn Athletics, and we're going to first start off with our women's swimming team. The swimming team traveled to Tampa this past weekend, and while they did lose to the Spartans 125-75, to they had a great showing overall as they took top honors in six of the 11 events they competed in. Tally Carmignani was the big winner in this overall, after being named the Sunshine State Conference Swimmer of the Week, she won the 1,000-yard freestyle, the 200-yard backstroke, and she was the first leg on the 400-yard uh, medley relay team. Uh, so big week for Carmignani, and other winners in this dual meet were Magdalena Baranowska, who won the 100- and 200-yard freestyle, as well as Tyne Potheater, who won the 200-yard breaststroke. Now, not to be overlooked is Julia Pedersen, and she was overshadowed in the 200-yard breaststroke by Carmen Yanni, but she finished runner-up in that race overall. Now, the Funny Nights are back in action on Saturday, November 16th, where they're going to be hosting Rollins at 1 p.m., and that's going to be the second swimming meet in the school's history, so hopefully we'll see you all out there. Now we're going to talk a little bit about women's soccer, and unfortunately the Funny Nights season came to a disappointing end following a 2-0 loss to Florida Tech this past Saturday. Lynn's going to finish the year 4-8-4 four, and four overall in 1-4-3 in the Sunshine State Conference. Now the team did honor its lone senior Paige Megason prior to the match and Megason, four-year letter winner with the Fighting Knights, starting 63 of 64 possible games during that four-year time span. She closes out her career with three goals, three assists. Uh, so, you know, we wish Paige a, uh, lots of luck in the future and, and thank her for all her contributions here for the last four years. Someone who we have to look forward to for the next three years, though, is uh, freshman Jordan Turner. Turner led the team with three goals, three assists, and nine points, so we hope for uh, many good things for years to come. Now we're going to switch from the women's team to the men's team and the Fighting Knights men's team. Winners one to nothing against Florida Tech this past Saturday, and that victory secured them the number three seed in the Sunshine State Conference Tournament and kept their postseason or NCAA postseason tournament hopes alive. Now the Fighting Knights are going to be hosting Tampa on Tuesday at 2 p.m. in the opening round of the SSC tournament. And if and when the Fighting Knights are victorious this Tuesday, they'll be traveling to St. Leo for games on Friday and Sunday should they be victorious. We're going to kick it out to oh no. We're going to kick it out to Danny Rivera who had a chance to catch up with Jason Senga to talk a little bit about Tuesday's game as well as making the uh, postseason push. Thanks, Danny and Jason. Great job. Now, the Finding Knights will also be saying goodbye to the Lynn University soccer field on Tuesday, or AKA the Graveyard. This has been our home since our inaugural season in 1986. Now, the Finding Knights' very first game came against Tampa, and now the very final game in, this, in the school's history at Lynn University Field will come against Tampa. So we'll hopefully see you guys all out there at 2 o'clock. If not, fans can watch the game live at lynnfightingknights.com. Now we're going to move on to women's golf. 
and our women's golf team had a dominating fall season and they're going to be heading into the spring year in February as the number one team in the country. Great year overall in the fall. Three tournament victories, one runner-up finish, the best fall season in the school's history. This last tournament at the Division II uh, preview, and this is a preview event on the same course that the national championship will be played on. The Fine Knights won that event by smashing their school's 36-hole uh, record, team record by 17 strokes. Samantha Smolin also breaking her own record, which she set earlier this year, with a 138 total. So great job all around from the Finding Knights, and uh, we look to continue that same uh, success in the fall as we look for a potential back-to-back -back national championship season. So we're going to end this week again with women's tennis and Val Confalonieri, as she is going to be traveling to New York, and she takes part, takes part in the USTA, ITA, National Indoor Tennis Championships against some of the top Division I competition in the country. Now, this is the only the second time Lynn University has sent somebody to the uh, USTA ITA Fall National Indoor Championships. The last time coming in 2007 when the men's tennis team sent Julian Carsouza and Dennis Regraff. So Val is going to be the first women's singles player to make it there. Um, the draw has not been released yet. She's going to begin competition on Thursday. And log on to LynnFindingNights.com for all your information on the women's tennis program, Val's success, as well as all of our 14 intercollegiate athletic programs. Don't forget to follow us at LU Knights on Twitter, Instagram, and Vine. And then like us on Facebook. We have hundreds of photo albums of uh, all of our home events and, and a lot of our uh, events on the road. This is Chad Beattie for Danny Rivera. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's Night Review.